real. Hey up peeps, it's time for something different. So, as promised in my last video, um, I'm going to do a bit of a setup guide and um, you're actually going to go through this with me because I've not even set this up yet. So this is the Sim 3D um, Rumble Pack mod for the Thrustmaster TLCM pedals. Now, I've already opened the box, so I'll just show you what's in it. So it comes with a control unit. Very nicely done, actually. Um, it's got power socket on that side and the USB to go into, obviously, into your PC. And then on the other side, we have three outputs for the rumble motors. Um, I've only got two because I'm only going to attach it to the um, brake and the throttle. Um, really, I don't really see much point of anything else. Now, this is an Arduino-based um, device, and the software to control this is SimHub, which is great because I already use it for my current rumble pack. So I've got a book kicker on here at the moment and a Realtek uh, force field um, seat pad as well. So there's the control box. Also in the box is the obligatory power supply. Just to add to the 25 I've already got, probably behind my rig and PC. And we also have some braided cables, two cables there to connect the motion box, uh, the Arduino box to the motors, and fairly long USB cable, um, which is, I'd rather, would have rather had a longer power cable, for the cable for the power socket, to be honest, to be honest but um, I'm sure I can find some sort of extension. And then there's the motors now. As I say, I've got the two motors. One for the clutch and one for, not for the clutch, for the throttle and one for the brake. So, we have here is the little rumble motors. So, these things will turn, hopefully, if everything works well. And say so that's where the cable plugs in. Very, looks like that could be very easily broken. So, I'm going to have to be very careful with this because I am. I am not very good at DIY. Despite me building all this, I am you know, not very good. So this bit here, if you know what the TLCM pedals are like, I mean, I'm going to show you this as I'm building it. Um, this will go behind the pedal to replace the current uh, level setting on the pedal. And uh, hopefully, once we get it all plugged in and working, We'll get some uh, feedback from the games um, when we lose traction. So, without further ado, let's strip down my pedals and give it a go. Wish me luck. Okay guys, so let's just have a look at my TLCMs, how they're configured at the moment. You can see the black back plate there. Now I have them turn the other way around as to what they came with as default because um, I was struggling with the angle on my rig so this angles them back a bit more I found it much more comfortable now if you can see also see there I'll talk about that at some point as well that is the um, apex 2 VR mod for this and I've got to say it's made a world of difference in the field for the pedals so what I need to do is obviously take them off and replace them back plates there with the rumble motors. So let's see if I can dig through my box of Allen keys to find a small Allen key to get that thing off. Okay, well I've come across my first problem already. Now the way I mount my pet pedals is I like the thin part of this back plate to be at the top to get the angle the way I want it. My default when you get these pedals is that way round. Okay, so it's thicker part at the top. Now, the motors are, de oops, are designed with the default in mind. So, 
for me to put this on, I can't put the thin part at the top because it won't fit. Much to my dismay. So, I'm going to have to go back to default setup because that's the way they fit on. Okay, let's see how, how I feel about this after we get it all finished. Okay, so I've got the motors now mounted um, and as you can see it's more of an upright position which is the default position for the TLCMs when you buy them. Now, as I say, I prefer my angle a little different. If you look at the clutch pedal there, um, you can see the angle that I normally like. Now, this has always been a fault, I thought, with the TLCM design. I thought they were very upright when I got them. But you could change them, I say, with that back plate. Just change the angle of that back plate. But these guys, Sim3D, have obviously had to design something um, based for the majority. So, you know, these mounts, these 3D printed mounts for the motors are based on the default um, alignment or setups that you would have on a TLCM. So I don't blame them um, for this. So I'm just hoping... Uh, that I can I can cope with it being at that angle. So let's get these. Let's change my clutch plate plate the right way round, and see how I get on. Okay, so I've just noticed something. If you look closely at the motor that I've just attached, well, that I've got attached to the throttle there, it's got a smaller weight, small weight on it. Now the one on the brake. Is much bigger now I think it's just pure purely look that I've actually put these on this way around because there's nothing there's no instructions that came with this I've got to say there's nothing in the in the in the uh, box with the kit so you have to go online and I can't find anything that says the bigger one is the brake and the smaller weight is for the throttle I'm just assuming at the moment I'll, I'll have to do some more research and see if that's the case as for the mo the box itself, I have mounted it underneath the pedal base. Um, temporary for the time being, just uh, double sided, <coughs> not double sided tape. I've got some Velcro sticking in place, and it's uh, cable tied in at the moment. That's not a permanent solution, but I just want to make sure everything's working before I really tie this all in place. Okay, so I have now attached the cables to the bottom of the motors and I've put some sort of sticky clips from I got from Amazon just to hold everything in place. Now, obviously my rig is a motion rig, so things do move around a bit. <clears throat> and as I said, these, these cables do seem a bit thin and would be very easy to break. So, just want to make sure there's enough movement so that the cable doesn't get tight as well. So that should do it. I can't move <laughs> my brake pedal by hand. It's uh, very stiff with the that mod on. So next thing to do, cable up the power. Okay, so I've opened up SimHub. I've already watched the video that um, Sim3D um, mentioned on their website um, as I said there's nothing w in the way of instructions that come with this what comes with the kit um, so you have to watch a setup video um, that's on YouTube anyway basically what it says is load up SimHub um, if you don't know what SimHub you miss is you're missing out it's a very amazing tool well worth um, licensing as well purchase it and uh, help the guys out because they do an amazing work with this this software Great for creating all sorts of um, rumble control, wind control, even um, display control if you've got any displays that you want to put on your rig. But for this case, what we're interested in is our um, rumble pack, rumble um, motors for the pedals, which is an Arduino board. So I've selected single Arduino, and when it um, when I clicked on that, and it started scanning, and it found it. So here we go. There's my um, my device there all selected all working great so next thing to do is go down to the shake it motors 
And on here we've uh, did that. no, actually no, missed a bit. What did I? No, oh, that was right. Shake it motors. And then here we go. There's my Arduino motors at the top there now. Um, basically, you need to test which channels to work out which motor is which. Now I found out that my channel one is my um, brake motor, and channel three is my accelerator so i've just gone down and i've selected the functionality that i want switching on okay so i've got road rumble switching on i know i'm more i'm very um, immersion based when it comes to my uh, my gaming and i love love the feel of rumbles and stuff like that so i wanted that coming through the pedal so basically what i've done there i when i go over rumble strips i'll be able to feel it on the um, the, on the left, which is basically on channel one, which is my going to be my uh, brake. I will feel the rumbles through that, and I shall also feel it on the ex on the accelerator pedal when I'm on the when the rumbles are on the right side of the car, just to give me a bit of feel in there. Anyway, so and I've set there the 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 uh, oops. I don't want that back up to hundred. I think that's what I had it on. That's the power I wanted um, going through to the rumbles. And most important things, obviously, is the feedback for wheel lock and wheel slip. Now I've got wheel lock there set on the brakes um, for front, right, left, and rear left, and rear right. So any time that the um, wheels lock up, I will feel it in the brake pedal. And then for the wheel slip, I've just got the rear left and rear right. I'm not really that fussed with the front left and front right, although I do have that um, rumble coming through to the force field pad. Anyway, so as you can see there, I've got a force field pad as well. Um, but for the feedback that I'm really looking for is whether the, the rear wheels are going to um, going to slip or not. Okay, so let's put the camera on. I'll show you what they look like. That camera, there we go. So there we go. So we've got my camera pointing at the pedals now. So if I go up and I test channel one there you go it's spinning there and i'll test channel three they see them spinning away there so we know they're working um i know they're working because i've already done this bit i've been playing around with it for a, an hour or so just to make sure everything's working okay and getting it tuned the way i like so turn the camera back off again for now and then basically what i've done then is i've gone down to the effects profile this time so we've got all the motors set up which which effects we want to play around with and then i've gone into the effects profile and i've se selected <clears throat> the effects that i want so in this case wheels lock um again this is all down to personal preference and taste um but i've set mine to a gamma factor of 20 and a minimum force of 50 and an input gain of 100 so this is what the the curve looks like so it only basically affects when i slam on the brakes gets to a certain point there and then i'll get a good rumble on the um, brake pedal the way i like it again this is down to personal preference just play around with the settings um i believe the sim 3d guys i've got a, a discord with lots and lots of settings on there which is worth having a look um i'll, I'll have a little look at that myself at some point and then on the slip again i've gone for a smoother response curve there and again when the i've got it set so that when the trigger trigger when the throttle hits 10 percent and there's the factors i've got on here for my settings these are things that i basically i like and this it also sends these effects through to the force field pad that i use as well so what does it feel like okay well i shall get it all set up <clears throat> and uh have a go in automobilista 2 my favorite game okay so i'm in the rig and i've got it all set up um let's see okay so we're in automobilista 2 i'm just going to go into a test day and I'm going to turn all of the rest of the rig off so nothing else is moving. 
no other rumble packs are going and then we can see the effects I've got now I say I've, I've had a little play with this now and I'm quite happy with the settings I've got so let's go to a test day and let's bring up a uh, trusty mini now uh, uh, might be worth me I've just realized this has got um, ABS hasn't it so let's just I think I think I turned it off let's have a look let's go edit setup uh, advanced setup Tension, drive train. Yeah, I've turned traction control off and anti lock brakes. So this should show a bit better on the um, settings anyway. So let's see if we can get. Uh, show you what it's like. Let's see. Start. Right, so off we go out of the. Ooh, have I got something switched on? Oh, uh, no, I've got me foot kicker switched on. Turn that off. Okay, so wait until I get outside. Okay, so you just saw straight away that. Ooh, there we go. Oh, there you go. So there's me. I've got, to, as I said, I've got it set so it goes over, goes, comes on over the rumble pads as well. Um, and if I slam on the brakes, you'll see the brake suddenly start vibrating. I can feel when the uh, brakes are locking up. So let's see if I can get the back wheels spinning. There you go. The back wheels are sliding now. So I can feel fairly well as to what's going on. It's um, not quite a high-pitched buzz noises but uh, I play in VR anyway so I'm not going to notice that especially with all the other things that I've got switched on as well at the same time with the rig moving and um, well, what the hell going on was the brake bias changing without even touching anything so it just saw it rock up then so there you go oh bink so this is the sort of uh, thing you're gonna you see and feel um, and you see it I'm gonna show you how it feels that you can't really but uh, that gives you an idea, anyway. Um, my thoughts? Well, I'll round it up in a second. Look. Okay, guys and gals, so there we go. Um, my Sim 3D rumble pedals are now up and running and working well. I've had a play for an hour or so, and I've been tweaking the Sim Hub settings to, to get a taste for what I like. Um, things I don't like about them, um, the cabling on the motor is extremely thin and I'm a bit concerned whether that's actually going to last. Um, also the fact that obviously I had to tilt my pedals a little bit further forward, go back to the default setting on the pedals, which is no fault of Sim3D. I think this is a bit of a design fault anyway with the TLCMs. Um, Feedback from them is absolutely brilliant. Um, again, you can't go wrong with SimHub. You've got so much control as to whether you want to go for um, pure immersion style feedback or feedback that's going to be useful for you, like having just wheel slip on the accelerator and wheel lock on the brake. Um, what else could be changed? Um, I did have to find a, an extension cable um, for the power supply. The power supply has got an extremely short cable. USB cable is fine. The power supply is very, very short. So I did actually find an extension cable for that to make that work. Get it all fitted in. Um, cable management has always been a nightmare for me at the best of times. But like, an I mean, overview of it is basically I like them. I think they're great fun. Cost, I think it was £100 for these. That's for the uh, two motor system. Um, <clears throat> no brainer for someone like me. I buy all this sort of stuff. It's just uh, I'm a I'm a geek, um, and I'll never change. So I'm sure I'm going to have lots and lots of fun with this. I'm sure I'm going to be changing settings again in Sim Hub and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking as I always do. And but generally, I've got to say I'm happy, and uh, I'm sure I'm going to get some fun out of it. Hope this was useful for someone. Um, if you're interested in this, uh, I'll leave a link to where I got them from in the in the description. <clears throat> also, if you've got any questions, please 
just ask, just drop a comment and I'll get back to you. Again, thanks for watching guys. If you like this sort of stuff, hit subscribe, hit like, and I shall see you on the next video. Take care.